All along this coastline, the ocean's changing. Deep water wells up to the surface sometimes and brings acidity with it. But we're changing the whole ocean's acidity as well. Are the changes that we're imposing on the oceans going to be so big that the organisms that live here cannot deal with them? The sea urchin has a hard internal skeleton that's made of calcium carbonate. And organisms that make shells or skeletons of calcium carbonate are particularly sensitive to ocean acidification. As carbon dioxide is increasing in the atmosphere, some of that carbon dioxide is being absorbed by the oceans. And as carbon dioxide is absorbed by the oceans, it makes it more acidic. What's unique about this experiment is, is that we're going to start with the egg and we're going to follow the larvae all the way to where it makes a tiny little sea urchin. And we're going to study it from the outside, how they look and how they grow, and the inside, the genes that are used to make these structures, the kinds of genetic mechanisms that might be interfered with by ocean chemistry in the future. that the combination of the outside and the inside look makes these experiments so different. Once the urchins spawn, the fertilized embryos develop into these free swimming larvae that spend 40 to 50 days swimming around out in the open ocean, in the plankton, feeding on algae. You can see that the arms of the sea urchin larvae are supported by these long skeletal rods and those skeletal rods have a big effect on how well it swims and how well it feeds. And so we want to see whether urchins that are raised under more acidified waters, whether they have a more difficult job making these critical skeletal rods in order to complete their development out in the open ocean. So the challenge is to recreate the ocean in the lab, but it's the ocean the way these larvae see it. So we need to move the water the way they see it. We need to grow them and feed them the way they see it. And we need to change the chemistry in the way that they're going to see in the future by adding CO2 to the atmosphere and letting it dissolve in the water. So now we're at day 42 of the experiment and we're in the wet lab at Bodega Marine Lab and we're growing the larvae that we created nearly six weeks ago. And into each of these sealed boxes, we're pumping gas that has a different level of carbon dioxide. We're stirring each jar with a paddle that's attached to a motor that slowly pulls the paddles back and forth. And that stirs the larvae in the jar, keeps them well mixed in that turbulent environment, and that matches the natural environment that they would see out in the ocean. So some of these boxes have carbon dioxide concentrations that match the current conditions that we see in the atmosphere today. And some of these boxes, like this one, have carbon dioxide at an elevated level that's predicted to occur sometime during this century. This culture jar, for example, is from the Oregon coast. This jar here has larvae that originally came from the Bodega area from Northern California. Some of these other jars are from Southern California. So in addition to seeing whether these sea urchins are sensitive to acidified water, we're also seeing whether different populations of urchins vary in their sensitivity to ocean acidification. Experiments we're doing right now um, haven't been done before. Most of the studies on sea urchin larvae have been short-term experiments where urchins have been raised under elevated carbon dioxide for maybe just a week or so. And in this system, one of the nice things is that we can keep the larvae um, healthy in these jars for long periods of time so we're able to raise them throughout their entire swimming period and then actually look at the juvenile sea urchins that result um, after the swimming phase. This guy seems to be coming along. So here we're looking at a small juvenile sea urchin. After 42 days of swimming in our cultures, they finally completed their development and this little guy has metamorphosed into a juvenile sea urchin you can see it already has its spines and it's crawling slowly along the bottom with its five sucker tube feet. And in this experiment, what we're going to be measuring 
is whether the size of these juvenile sea urchins and the weight of these juvenile sea urchins is smaller in urchins that have been raised as larvae under elevated carbon dioxide conditions. The ocean isn't just a place that we take food out of, it's a place that regrows our food for us. It regrows whole ecosystems in the march of generations from one year to the other. It's that march of generations that we're really looking at in this experiment. Can the larvae survive? Can the parents of the future generation be expected to live into the next generation? <laughs>